Today we're going to learn how to do electron configurations and how these electron configurations are used to describe how the electrons are arranged within an atom. So if we go back to the periodic table and we just jog our memory about how the elements are arranged and the different levels and sublevels, the first two columns of elements represent the elements that end in the S block or S sublevel. The six elements on this side of the periodic table end in what we call the P block or the P sublevel. Those in the middle end in the D sublevel. And then those at the bottom end up in the F sublevel. Okay. So we are going to arrange our electrons by energy level and by sublevel. The period numbers on the side of the periodic table are going to indicate what energy level you're on for the S and the P sublevels. Okay? The D sublevels, the D block elements, the, peri the period number does not correspond to their energy level. Their energy level is going to be one less than the period number. And for the F group down here, their energy level is actually going to be two levels lower than what the period number is. Okay. So to organize our electrons into an electron configuration, we have to include the energy level, the sublevel designation, and the number of electrons that are in each sublevel. So if we pick an element like phosphorus, for example, phosphorus has a total of 15 electrons that we need to organize. So we have to start in level one. Level one has an S sublevel that can hold two electrons. So our first level and sublevel will be one S2 because it holds two electrons. The next, after the first level is full, we come to the second level and it's going to be two S and S can hold two electrons. After 2s, we follow the periodic table across to 2p. 2p can hold a total of six electrons. After 2p, we come to 3s. S can hold a maximum of two. And after 3s, if we follow the periodic table across, we come to sublevel 3p. Notice that phosphorus is not at the end of the sublevel, it's in the middle. So we're going to count across 1, 2, 3. So phosphorus is the third element in. So there are only three electrons in the 3p sublevel. Okay. So this gives, provides the energy level, sublevel, and the number of electrons in each energy level and sublevel. To double check yourself, remember phosphorus had a total of 15 electrons? Add up your superscripts and they should equal your atomic number which is 15. So 2, 4, 10, 12, 15. So that means that we must have the correct superscripts if it equaled our atomic number. So let's choose another element from the periodic table. How about something like nickel? Okay, nickel has number, atomic number 28, which means it has 28 electrons. So, We have to start with the first level and sublevel just as we did before, 1s2. The next one to fill will be 2s2 and then 2p6. So we have finished the second row. We're on to the third, so it's going to be 3s2, 3p6. After 3p6, we start on the fourth row. Now, 4s is actually going to come before 3d. So there is not in order in terms of the levels, but we are going to follow the periodic table across. So 4s, the first two. 
after 4s is when we start the d block elements and as i mentioned earlier the energy level for the d block elements is one less than the period number so this is actually going to be 3d and then nickel is the eighth element over in the 3d sublevel so we're going to put our level sublevel and the number of electrons in that sublevel and to double check yourself again add up your superscripts and make sure that it equals your atomic number so 2 4 10 12 18 28 so if we add it up it equals 28 that is the same as our atomic number so we are good okay so let's do one more Let's pick another element, one that's down a little bit farther on the periodic table. How about lead? Lead has 82 electrons. Okay. Come on. There we go. 82 electrons to organize. So that means we are going to fill everything above lead all the way down to here so that means all the levels and and sub levels are going to be full until we get to lead on the periodic table so just to go through it while we're looking at the periodic table we're going to have 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 After 4s, we fill 3d, all 10. Now we start back with the p sublevel again, so this is going to be 4p6. After 4p, we come to the fifth row, 5s2. Again, the d's are one level lower, so it's going to be 4d, all 10. Then 5p6 down to the sixth row 6s okay now one thing to note this is where the lanthanides break out on the sixth row so after barium you have to come down to la and across here okay the f block is two lower energy level is two less than the period number so we're actually on period six this is going to be 4F. So it'll be 6S2, 4F, 14 of them. Back to the D block, so that's 5D, all 10 of them. Now we're back to the P block, and it's the same as the row number, so it's going to be 6P, just the first two, because lead only has two electrons here. So let's write that out. one s two two s two two p six completed the second row three s two three p six completed the third row fourth row is when the d's start so after four s two we have three d ten then four p six completed the fourth row we're on to the fifth row five s two then for the D, it's 4D10, then back to 5P6. After 5P6, we're on to the sixth row. So we have 6S2. That's where we break out and go down to the lanthanides. So 4F14. We come back up to the Ds, 5D10, and then 4 p will be our last level and sublevel. Okay? As you can see, it gets very long the more electrons we have. To double check, you would just add up all your superscripts again and make sure that it equaled 82. So for lead, this is a great example to talk about abbreviated electron configurations. Okay. 
Abbreviated con electron configurations help you to write the electron configurations in a more concise way. And the way we do it is by, f by locating the noble gas that precedes the element on the periodic table. So for lead, we find the noble gas. Remember, noble gases are in group 8A, the last column. We find the noble gas that comes before it. So we go up a row and over. So xenon is the noble gas that precedes lead. We are going to write the noble gas in square brackets. Okay? That represents all the electrons up to xenon. Okay? And then you will continue your electron configuration on the row that your element is on. So we're going to do 6s2, 4f14, 5d10, 6p2. And that would be how you would write the abbreviated electron configuration for lead. So the key here is that it must be the noble gas that precedes the element. It can't just be any element from the period periodic table before it. It just it has to be a noble gas. Okay? So that is how you can explain the organization of electrons using electron configuration or abbreviated electron configurations.